In this practical, we learn to use the hemocytometer, which is this modified microscope slide that has a small grid that contains a known volume of suspension and can be used for counting cells. It happens quite often in, in a lab that we need to count cells. It could be blood cells, for instance, and the name hemocytometer actually refers to blood cells because hemo means blood. But uh, we can also uh, count other types of cells, for instance, yeast, if you work in a brewery, or uh, sperm cells, if you work in a fertility clinic. Or uh, today, we are actually using the hemocytometer for something else, as we are going to ask you to count a different type of cells, some uh, unicellular organisms known as uh, euglena, euglena gracilis. This is a, a small uh, flagellate, uh, in a cellular pro a protist, that lives in fresh water and uh, has many interesting features. It is green because it uh, can photosynthesize, it has chlorophyll, but uh, if there is no light, it can also uh, consume uh, organic matter as an heterotroph. So it, it can be both autotroph and heterotroph. And uh, Euglena has also some other interesting feature. Uh, for instance, the fact that it has what is, uh, a photoreceptor. Actually, the name Euglena means uh, good eye, uh, to uh, indicate really that it has this eye spot, this photoreceptor, that can be used for sensing light. And this is also something that is really nice to observe under the microscope because uh, we can see this red uh, spot. Now, uh, in order to use the hemocytometer, and today I have one model, there are different types. This is an improved Neubauer model. Um, we need to put a sample on, the, on this special microscope slide. And to do this, we use a, a micro pipette. I take the pipette that goes from 0 0.5 to 10 microliters because I need to take 10 microliters of suspension. So, uh, as you remember, with the pipette, you can regulate the actual volume that you take by turning the wheel here. And then uh, I can take a pipette tip from the, from the box. And uh, in order to uh, take a sample of suspension in the pipette, I need to go uh, when I'm outside of the suspension, I go to the first stop. If you feel with your finger, there is a first stop and then a second stop. Mm -hmm. So you go to the first stop, then you go inside the box with the suspension, and then you go up slowly. Otherwise, some bubbles may enter the tip of the pipette and the, the, the volume may not be accurate. Today, the, the actual volume doesn't matter too much, but in, uh, in some other applications, of course, the volume is important. And uh, once we have uh, our sample in the tip of the pipette, make sure that you always keep the tip down you know, so that the, the, the suspension that, or the solution that is in the pipette doesn't go inside the pipette, with, as this could uh, break the pipette. We need to put it on the uh, microscope slide. So I, I take a cover and I put it on the, on the slide and now I uh, put the tip of the pipette on, uh, on the uh, grid, on the gray area in the middle, next touching to the uh, cover, not on top of course, of, not on, on top of the cover but touching the edge of the cover so that by capillarity the uh, suspension goes inside like this. And if there is an, uh, uh, a little bit more, it doesn't matter because it will go in the smaller uh, uh, wells that are there. Once I've done, of course, I, when I empty the pipette, I can go to the second stop, of course. Mm? It's very important that when you fill the pipette, you go to the first stop, then inside your solution or suspension, and then up slowly. And when you empty it, you can go to the second stop. Mm? If you go to the second stop before going into the solution, your, the volume that you get will be too much and it, uh, it won't be possible to release all that volume. So it can go inside the pipette and uh, damage it or break it. Once I've done, I just uh, release the tip with this button here 
and uh, it's done. Now I'm ready to put, I can uh, hang the, the pipette here. Now I'm ready to put the uh, Neubauer counting chamber on the microscope. As usual, I start from the objective with lower magnification. I put the slide on the stage. The light is already on in this example, but I need to make sure that the light uh, is uh, centered with the, the opening of the stage is, is centered uh, just uh, above the, the counting grid like this. And once I'm ready to have a look, I, uh, I start from the top and lower a little bit with the focus and I should see the grid which I see now, okay? And a beautiful uh, number of Euglenas. They are quite small. I can uh, zoom in by changing the uh, objective. And of course, I also need to uh, um, focus the condenser and focus again a little bit. I see them quite well. I, because Euglena is a, a, a relatively big compared to red blood cells, I will, I'm going to use the four squares that are on the, on the edges of the grid for counting them. So I, I have this uh, object, the yellow objective, and I move it to one. I move with the X, Y knob, I move uh, on one of these squares, but I can see them well. They, they, they swim around, so they are not very easy to count. And I can count the number going on a, a pattern as a snake, it's a good way of counting them. I need to be very quick. Uh, I, I also need to have a rule to decide if I include them when they touch the edge of the square. Mm? Otherwise, if I include all those that touch the edge, my area will be bigger. And if I exclude all of those that touch the edge, the area will be smaller and the volume that I count. So to have a, 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 a as a rule, I can decide, for instance, that I count all those that touch the top and the left edge of the square, and I exclude from the count all those that touch the right and the bottom edge of the square. Once I have my count, uh, I do a repeat for each square. I repeat, I repeat the count for each square, and uh, I take the average so that I have a more precise estimate. In particular, with these Euglenas, I need to be very quick because, as I said before, they can sense light, they can move towards light. So if you wait too much, you will find all of them in the same spot, in the same corner. And so the, your estimation of density will be biased. Once I have all the numbers, I just need to remember that one square contains 0.1 microliters of suspension. And because we said uh, that in, typically we express the, num the count of cells, the density of cells in terms of number of cells per milliliter, 0, 0,1 microliters is 10,000 times smaller than one milliliter because 0, 0,1 microliter, one microliter, I multiplied by 10. And then from one microliter to one milliliter, I need to multiply by 1,000 again. So there are 10,000 squares, uh, to say so, in one milliliter. And uh, so I just need the, to make the conversion and have my density of cells. Of course, if I want to be a little bit more accurate, I, I may uh, pipette them again and do a second count just to confirm or to, to verify that, uh, you know, when pipetting, for instance, then right now they all went to the bottom of, of this uh, bijou, is called. But uh, if I shake a little bit, they will uh, mix better and I will have a better estimate of the actual number. 